Hello. That is a horse walking by. <laughs> I just pulled in the house and pulled over. I am deep in the heart of Texas. Building a home is never easy, but what happens when you add in a global pandemic? With new obstacles and endless supply chain disruptions, can your dream home still become a reality? To prove what really is possible, we went to Fredericksburg, Texas and teamed up with Tyler O'Brien of Agave Custom Homes and built a craftsman style farmhouse in Hill Country. Then we called on eight design teams from around the country to turn these empty rooms into a haven that's peaceful, productive, and party ready. Stay tuned to learn all their tricks of the trade, from when to splurge, to how to get creative in the face of inevitable constraints. No matter your own style, you're bound to find a new idea for every room in your house. I'm your host, Carisha Swanson with House Beautiful, and this is season one of Blank Slate. Today we're here to meet Stephanie Sabi of Sabi Interior Designs. Her style is granny chic, mixing the old while embracing the new. I've given her the monumental task of designing the kitchen, dirty kitchen, and rethinking the utility room. She should have arrived by now. Let's go meet her. Hey! Hey! <laughs> Welcome to Fredericksburg. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited for you to see this space completely raw. You want to go check it out? Yeah. Okay. My name is Stephanie Savvy and my firm is Savvy Interior Design. My design style is collected. It's approachable. We reference a lot of historic architecture and interiors, but also try to think about a fresh take on that. I was assigned the kitchen, the mudroom, the pantry, and the laundry room. So what do you think about this space in its purest and rawest form? I like it. I feel like it has a lot of potential. Oh. I feel like this would be a really great space to have more of an eat-in kitchen, like put the full dining room in the center of the kitchen, spend some time there, longer than you would at a standing island. Sure. What about losing the island completely? You want to lose the island completely? I think that would be fun. <laughs> I feel like as much as we spend time on stools and stuff like that, they're never as comfortable as a sit-down dining table. So maybe we just bring the dining table into the kitchen. I mean, it feels like something you'll have to talk to the builder about, yeah. <laughs> not my domain. Okay, well, I feel like I can sell it. I think it'd be really fun. Okay. Another idea I had was let's just totally shun the all white, beige, neutral kitchen. I feel like if you're living in the kitchen, you wanna express yourself through the kitchen like you would a living room or a den. So maybe we do color and add mm. lighting that's like at different heights and maybe wallpaper. Um, just soft finishes, stuff that would feel like it represents the homeowner, it's not just for everyone. Love that, especially wallpaper in a kitchen, why not? Right, <laughs> yeah. I know open floor plans have been very popular, but I think having some definition of space would be nice so that it's not just one bleeding space into the other and we can explore more sure. by really having boundaries between each space. That sounds like a lot of ideas. <laughs> I have a lot of ideas. <laughs> I think you need to get with the builder and I need to leave you to it. Because <laughs> you've got a lot of drawing to do, but this sounds pretty amazing. I can't wait to see the final product. I I'm excited. I think it's going to be fun. If I had to choose one room to design forever, I would design the kitchen every time. When thinking about this space, um, I know it is new construction and I really want it to look maybe like a kitchen that's been there forever. So to do that, I really wanna break away from the all white. I wanna add some texture and color and different levels of lighting and just really make it one of a kind. I envision a space that you would come and sit and talk for hours. So I wanted comfortable seating, different levels of lighting, a fun use of color. I wanted a rug that gave it a comfortable vibe and kind of made the space feel even cozier. I wanted a sink by the window so you could look out in the backyard. I wanted refrigerators that were not a big dominant feature and I wanted a lot of counter space. Stephanie got the floor plans pretty early. One of the first things she did was say, oh, this floor plan's nice. Um, I don't want an island. America's kind of gone gaga for islands. She wanted to have more of a European sensibility in the kitchen. We're in Texas. <laughs> 
people like big kitchens, people like big islands. I wasn't sure how it was gonna fly, but I liked the idea of introducing something new. Quite frankly, islands' real purpose is to have countertop space, space to work. This kitchen has plenty of space to work. So I felt like because we weren't giving that up, everything was gonna be okay. My conversations with Tyler were always very entertaining. We have a good banter. Stephanie first called me when we were working on early, on the early phase of this project. And she had that Nashville Southern twang. And I'm like, this girl's fun. She was laughing, she was cutting jokes. I was like, this is someone I could drink a beer with for sure. Stephanie is more of a fly by the seat kind of person. So I'm on the project and I need a question or answer now. I'm FaceTiming her and she's making a design change right then and there. Hey Stephanie, how are you? Hey Tyler, I wanted to throw this idea at you. I was thinking after looking at the floor plan, what if we lost the island and what if we moved the table into the kitchen and lost the dining room and it kind of created this living space inside the kitchen. So we have an island in the kitchen and the dining room was next to the kitchen. So why would we not keep the island, which is a great workspace? Think outside of the box. Think outside of Texas. I'm very difficult to convince, I would say. I think kitchens are a place where people come and sit and relax. And I think perching on an island is just less comfortable. Um, removing a kitchen island from a kitchen. <laughs> and what if we introduce people to this idea that like a kitchen could be a space that you lounge in for a couple hours? So if you've got a kitchen table in the middle of this kitchen, where's your workspace? And I also thought we could engage the pantry and add countertop space back there so that becomes just like this super functional workspace. I was thinking we could stick the microwave back there and maybe put a second oven so we'll have our standard range in the front, oven in the back. I think we need to put a full-size sink. What's the point of having appliances behind and then you've already got them in the main kitchen? So you have two of everything? Is that what you're thinking? We just have duplicates of some, right? So we're gonna have a dishwasher back there as well. So that would serve as overflow space if you had company that you could sit dirty dishes and then just enjoy the people that you're with. People are asking for double dishwashers like on all of my projects right now. I, I think it's totally gonna help sell the house. Maybe I don't cook enough. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I don't entertain enough. So maybe I need to think about it a little bit and see Maybe there is some functionality for someone like doing a big family meal. Let me digest this for a minute. You could give me a drawing so I could see how it lays out and, okay. and let me think about it. Okay, perfect, I will do that. I have a couple of friends that are designers in the industry and I basically did a poll with a couple of them when uh, Stephanie brought the idea of pulling out the kitchen island and doing a center kitchen table. And they all came back with, it's a great concept for what you want in a home, which is gathering. And it's different and fresh and something that was old that they're trying to bring back. And so I got some validation, which we all need in life. And that helped convince me to allow that to happen. Hey, it's me again. Hey, Stephanie, what do you want now? Don't pretend I'm not your favorite. Okay, quick ideas. I'm super excited about it. I think we should do aubergine for the kitchen cabinets. It's fun, it's different. I do not want to do what everyone else is doing. A pink ceiling and a mustard color in the laundry room. Sound good? Whoa, 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 wait, what's no, wait, wait, what's aubergine? No, just think about it. Uh, hell no, are we doing purple cabinets in the utility room? And Stephanie said, well, it's not purple, it's aubergine. And I said, nope, it's purple. You can call it whatever you want, it's purple. So she decided to go with a color I hate, yellow. Hey, buddy. Sorry I hung up on you. I was just really excited and I didn't want you to say no. Big breath in, big breath out. This is gonna be one of my better ideas. I think we should do a big graphic floral on the ceiling in the laundry room. Like, we have to paint it? No, wallpaper. Um, have you not heard the phrase granny chic? I have, but that's not me. But it's me. And this is us together. We're gonna do great, okay? Think about it, we'll talk tomorrow. Okay. Bye. See ya, bye. When we started to consider different solid surface materials for the countertop, 
I typically go with stone. In selecting Caesar stone, we thought about our overall kitchen design. There are several factors to think about when deciding on a solid surface for your kitchen. Durability, the general movement of the stone, um, what kind of character it's going to bring to the project. So sometimes we use really busy marbles that really define the space on their own so the other elements are not as big of a deal. Granites are very popular. Granites are more predictable. They have more of a small pixelated pattern to them. So contractors typically lean more towards granite because it has that predictability factor that more people would like hopefully and approve. Quartzite is kind of a marriage between marble and granite as far as aesthetic. It performs more like a granite. So it has that impervious, you can spill stuff, wipe stuff. I use a lot of quartzites in my project. Quartz is a man-made product. Caesar stone is a quartz. And the beauty of quartz is that it has the same factors as far as durability as the quartzite products. But overall pattern, again, and predictability is all there. So I feel like when you're working with a client that you don't know, a quartz from Caesar stone would be a great selection. I just went antiquing in Fredericksburg. I was so excited when I came out and fit everything I found in the back seat of this car. To me, a space should always have some sort of local meaning. So to do that, I sourced all of the antiques here in Fredericksburg. So I'm super excited to take everything I've collected from the local antique stores and really curate this kitchen. It's my favorite part of the project. It takes way longer than anyone would ever think because I like to do this and then walk away and then I'll come back and do this. But in the end, everything has its perfect spot and I feel like I've created a unique space for a unique client. So I explain my style as being very collected and unique, but collections are specific to the homeowner. So I can't collect for you without knowing you. So typically by this part of the project, we know each other well, and I can go out to antique stores and be like, hey, didn't you live for a summer in the Catskills? Or haven't you spent time in Boston? I found this pennant. And I'm able to kind of curate a collection and then we can lay it out and kind of walk through the space and talk about what would feel meaningful and tell your story in your house. So in this kitchen, we don't have a client, but I did want to go into the same process I typically do. So I've pulled some antiques from a local store. I found these little silhouettes today when I was out. Um, I brought this vintage painting with me from Nashville. I just think she has a lot of character. The paint is chipping off, so it's not too precious. Um, kitchens are made to be used and cooked in, and there's steam and heat. And I don't know, some people get worked up about art and where we place it, but I say, you know, if you love a piece like this, put it where you want it, and then just don't worry about it. And then I found this little carving that, in my head when I was collecting, had kind of the same overall um, visual volume as these three silhouettes had. So we had a little oops on this project with um, our sconce height on this wall. So it was supposed to be a lot lower and be closer to face height and it was mounted a lot higher. It is fine, we're gonna move on. Um, but to make it look purposeful, I've collected these pieces and I'm going to stack them like this um, down the side of the cabinet to make it look like it was always meant to be. Another thing that I do a lot is try to find antique vessels and crocs and things like this. And I love to just walk out in the yard and pull a branch off a tree, put some water in it, and I think it adds like instant vibe to a kitchen. Um, if you look at my portfolio, it is definitely a card I play often, but I'm not into proper fancy floral arrangements, and to me, everyone has a tree. Um, that you can go pull a branch off of. And so finding a vessel like this is so worth the money because you're not spending it on grocery store flowers. And that's the best part of my job. When we were designing or doing early floor planning, Stephanie had an idea of building this wall transom or divider between the kitchen and family room. You know, in the 90s, you would go into a home and it was a dining on the left, a study on the right, family room in the back with the kitchen. She also kept saying, Tyler, we gotta be forward thinkers. We've got to step ahead of, of where the trend we think is heading. I think there is um, kind of a full circle moment happening where we're okay with having separate rooms again. And I just kind of wanted to celebrate that and display how that can allow two spaces that are adjacent to take on a different flavor and just become an experience. Like who wants every room to feel the same?
I always tell clients if they're gonna splurge on one thing, to splurge on the range hood. By splurging, I mean just building in that extra character and detail. So I did that in this kitchen. It is definitely the shining star and worth the splurge. One thing we're all struggling with right now in our industry is lead times. They are awful. And I really wanted to integrate some sort of custom lighting element into the space. So we took two off the shelf options, combined them together, and that was our creative solution. In this situation, we ordered this visual comfort sconce, which I love, and it came with this simple white shade. Um, so we've removed the shade and replaced it with this femme wash shade. And I think it's fun and different, and it didn't cost a lot of extra money. There are a bunch of fun pleated shade options on the market right now. There's some vendors on Etsy as well. And that's just a little trick we use to create one-of-a-kind spaces. I thought the install process went pretty well, seeing as I live in Nashville and flew in the day before we installed. Um, I honestly did a lot of the legwork here in Fredericksburg. Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist can be really awesome places to find those one-of-a-kind special moments. In our situation, I didn't want to rely on lead times, so I found all of the seating in our kitchen from Facebook Marketplace. I have two best friends in Austin now. He, they helped me load my chairs in, um, but that is my brilliant hack. I'm hiding in the shoe section. Okay, I found what I came for. All the jars. At the Walmart. I love this space. I am tired. I look tired. <laughs> I came kind of fresh and bubbly and I'm leaving with zero gas, but it was totally worth it. This is my favorite kitchen, but every one of my projects is my favorite project. I've enjoyed my time here and I feel very, very lucky to be on this project. So this is the kitchen, what do you think? I think this is beautiful and super unexpected. I mean, weren't you doing something with aubergine? <laughs> I, I think I heard that. I think I heard that through the grapevine. Yes, we know who won the battle on that. I did not win that one. But I feel like Chappelle Green was a great choice. <laughs> Tell me how you thought about color in this space and what you wanted it to do. So I was really shooting for a non-matchy, unexpected combination of color. I feel like there are certain colors we see a lot of right now, and yeah. this is less frequent than others. Sure. And then introducing the yellow. Um, with the Chappelle Green, with the William & Morris wallpaper, I feel like it's just an unexpected combination. The other thing that you did here that you promised to do was blow up the island. There's no island here, so I you won. got that one. I did. <laughs> I won the battle with that one. We have a very comfortable laid-back seating arrangement with comfortable chairs. Yeah. <laughs> so I worked with Paul Grothaus to design this checkerboard pattern table, and I really love how it turned out. It's just different. I've never yeah. seen this kind of pattern with a table, and his wood species are so rich, and I just really love it. Well, some of the things that you also did, I happen to know, or this crazy hood. This is beautiful. Yes. And they also designed that, right? Yes, he did. I designed a lot of kitchens and I wanted this one to be completely different. So I looked at different shapes and different materials and Paul just is really skilled with fine wood and he helped me put this together and it is exactly what I envisioned. <laughs> it's beautiful and completely, again, unexpected for the space. Another thing that I love, you know, when you think about kind of the kitchens that you see everywhere, you mm -hmm. know, the white kitchen, mm -hmm. the white countertop, you went in not just different directions with color, but also with the fabrication. So what you decided to do for these countertops. Tell me how you got there, because I know you're a lady that loves natural stone. I do love natural stone. I will say I may be a convert from this kitchen. Nice. We ended up with Temple Black by Caesar Stone. Um, I love soapstone, and I really thought of that initially. And then after going through a bunch of sampling with them, we came up with this. And honestly, when you step back, it looks like a natural stone to me, but has the qualities of a quartz. Right, so like no muss, no fuss. <laughs> yeah, live your life, spill your wine. This kitchen works for everybody. Oh, nobody has to tell me to spill wine. I'm happy to do that. <laughs> Same. 
<laughs> one of the things that I love that you've done in the space, aside from getting rid of the island, is really thinking about the space as a space to eat and dine mm -hmm. together as a family. But with a new construction build, it can sometimes feel too new. Mm -hmm. So some of the pieces you've brought in, including these like fun chairs, can you just talk about how you integrate in so much kind of history into your space? Yeah. So I'm a collector. Um, my whole basement is filled with my treasures that I've just found over time. Um, I try to not wait for a project to start to start collecting. So sure. anyway, I have this treasure trove and this represents a lot of them. I found a lot of these pieces locally. Some of them I shipped from Nashville. So the first layer is new construction right. and then to make it feel like an actual one-of-a-kind special kitchen, we try to find one-of-a-kind special pieces. Yeah. So I found these chairs on Facebook Marketplace. Nice. I made best friends with these two guys. They helped me load in my car in Austin. Same with these chairs. I found them as well. So, you know, I knew Paul's table was going to be very pristine and new, and I needed to give the overall look some patina. And there's yeah. no better way to give patina than actual old furniture. And at the end of the day, there's no kitchen without kitchen appliances, right? Correct. So I see this like mega range behind you. Yes. <laughs> but where's the fridge, where's the freezer, where's where's everything? Yes, so we use this range by Signature Kitchen Suite and I love it. It is new, it is shiny, it has all the bells and whistles, but again, we wanted to counterbalance that by not having every appliance sure. stick out. So with the um, towers that we used, we panelized them. So it looks just like a cabinet and we're celebrating the range. We have all the luxury of the towers, but they're just not standing out as much, which I really like. I really like that too. And also, this is the king of the room. It is the king. <laughs> this is our king. You can only have one king, right? Or maybe it's the queen, not the it's king. It's the queen. It can There's be only one. one king. So. <laughs> only one ruler in the kitchen. Exactly. So these guys are the background. Another thing that I know that you had to work with was really a pretty large space. There was no dividing line between the living room, the dining room, and the kitchen. And I know you wanted to kind of take some space from the dining room and bring the dining area into the kitchen. But mm -hmm. in order to add separation, I didn't really know how you were gonna do it. Mm -hmm. Not only is the ceiling a little bit lower in here, but you've added something completely unexpected, again. Right. <laughs> that is Thank the theme, you. unexpected. The theme. Thank you, that's the biggest compliment, yeah. So. I feel like people are moving back to use separate spaces in a home. We went with open home concept for a long time. It's still the standard in a lot of builder homes. But I talked to Tyler and it's another battle that I won. <laughs> we created division between my room and the living room with a transom side light design. It's a definition of space. So when I'm in the kitchen, I'm in the kitchen. And there's not that bleed. And you have an opportunity to distinguish one space from the other because you have a good transition with paint colors, sure. um, floor pattern, and stuff like that, which we did employ. We have brick floors in here, right. wood floors in there. I love the idea of breaking it apart. I'm also a fan of kind of having rooms again, yes. right? Yes. Speaking of having rooms again, I know there's a couple of more spaces that I gave you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I know that became part of your entire design, so mm -hmm. can we go check those out? Absolutely. Okay. So this is what I'm calling the dirty kitchen. This is awesome. I cannot love all this woodwork more. Mm. So just tell me what the purpose of a room like this is. Okay, so we call it the dirty kitchen, okay. which is funny now that I'm in it because this is like <laughs> the fanciest small kitchen I've ever seen. <laughs> what we had in mind was that the kitchen is a hosting space. It has wing back chairs, it's relaxed, it's cozy. And we wanted when people came over that we could have a spot to throw dirty dishes in, to maybe run the dishwasher, to let the kids pop some popcorn, and it not be in the main kitchen. Sure. Space. So we call it the dirty kitchen. We have an extra oven back here in case the food's not ready before guests arrive. You can just kind of shift everything back here. Big, deep LK sink. You can stack a ton of dishes in there. Same with the faucet. It's just very functional, but also attractive. Is this the same sink that you have in the main kitchen then? It is, yeah. So it's funny how the two spaces read completely different. Yeah. <laughs> I liked it in both spaces. It doesn't um, it doesn't read the same, but it makes the two spaces work together. I also have to say, whenever I think about a kitchen, I love a deep sink, love you know, because you also can hide a lot in a deep sink. Yeah. <laughs> and you can wash a baby in it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. <laughs> All right, so one other thing I'm noticing beyond the dirty kitchen is this little contraption. What do you have in yes, the corner there? That is the most exciting thing to me. So as a mom of four children, when I'm packing them up to head out the door, the very last thing I always remember is water. Sure. <laughs> There's just 
tons of bottles and I worry about whether the filter's been changed. So when I was looking at LK products, I found their water dispenser and it was hands down the most exciting thing of this backspace. It's right in the mudroom. You know, I just envisioned someone with a bag on their shoulder, you know, kids grabbing up their feet. <laughs> yes. And they just pour those water bottles, hand them to the kids, and everyone goes and gets in the car. I love that because it's literally on the way out to the pool area, out to yes. the garage, into the kitchen, like yeah. everywhere. <laughs> yes, it's like a command center. Like I right. love functional things, so yeah, that was And great. then beyond you is a little knock room. Yes, so we have just a little like check-in drop station where you can check an email or write a letter or <laughs> whatever people do these days. <laughs> so one other thing that I asked you to do was to think about re thinking, re-envisioning the utility room. Mm -hmm. It can be a pretty basic space, but lately they've gotten a lot more fun, and so I wanna see what you've done with this one. Okay, let's go see it. Okay. So it looks like you won the battle with the yellow. I did. <laughs> this color is India Yellow by Fair and Ball, yeah. and I think for a laundry room, it is just the happiest color ever. Well, and you have a window in here, so it's nice and bright, right? right. So it can yeah. hold this color. Right, you cannot be sad about doing laundry in this room. And I also love your wallpaper. I love the idea of wallpaper in a laundry room. I agree. I am a huge fan of um, Morrison Co. They are my absolute favorite wall covering. Um, so it was really exciting to, to use them both here and the kitchen. It is a utility room, so there has to be some utility in this room. Correct. So tell me what you added in to make this work. So we have the laundry component, obviously. We have the LG Studio Tower, yeah. um, which I love. But my absolute favorite piece in here is the LG Studio Styler. So this is where you can hang your laundry on the inside and it steams it for you. Love that, right? Yes. <laughs> it's like having a little mini dry cleaner at home. Exactly, <laughs> or a mini person to steam your laundry. <laughs> and then obviously, you know, we're in Texas. One of the things that I've noticed is everybody has a dog. Yes, I imagine dogs running all over this property. It's 10 acres, coming home very dirty. So with that in mind, we put a dog shower and we use the LK faucet to, um, clean these dogs. And I think it's gonna be really handy. I could see cleaning my children with this thing. <laughs> Little mini yes, news, right? Just spraying them down, dogs or kids, whatever. You know, I love that. And I love that you've also used like a pot filler to have oh, it yeah. easily accessible for refilling whatever your dog's name is, little water bowl. Right. It's so cute and so functional. And I just love that you played with color in a different way in here. Uh, I was excited to win the battle. Yeah, <laughs> you won the battle. I won the That's battle. That's all that counts. <laughs> In my industry, people call me kind of the queen of kitchens. It's something I love. I love to write about it. I love to talk about it. I love to interview people in their kitchens. I like to open up their cabinet doors and get really nosy and figure out what's going on. And so what I loved about Stephanie's space is she really kept things pretty simple. The lines of her kitchen are just really simple and delicate, I felt like. Even the hardware she chose wasn't like in-your-face statement hardware. And so I think like that sensibility was really nice. Also, I love that it wasn't a white kitchen, right? And that it wasn't white countertops. There's a look for that and there's a place for it. But I think we've probably all collectively seen a lot of that. And so it was nice that she used a real color. In this house, while it's not massive for Texas, there's still room for special spaces. And one of those spaces was originally the utility room and Stephanie converted it into the dog's pad. There is a doggy shower in there. There's a place for like a tap nearly on the floor that you can put water into the dog bowl right there without having to splash water all over the place going from one spot to another. And because we love our dogs and we love to know what they're doing and we also know they get in trouble, there's even a camera from GE in there, an indoor camera, so at any given point, you can see what your pup is up to. But really my favorite part and if I had the room in my house, which I do not, my house could fit inside parts of this house. <laughs> if I had the room, what I really love, my favorite space is that dirty kitchen. I thought she made it so elegant, the opposite of dirty. <laughs> that space elevated the idea of a dirty kitchen so much, and that's my favorite part of it. Stephanie wins Tyler, because that's her new BFF. 